Hello everyone, this is Super Dudes. Previously on Alan Wake, we just had a nightmare and woke up to it on a ferry heading to Bright Falls. So let's continue. Let's act like we're on vacation. Go stand next to that old gentleman there. I want a shot of you with the town in the background. <laughs> sure. I'll even give you a title for the shot. A city boy, moments before he got eaten by a bear. I will be impressed if a bear can make it onto this ferry to eat you, Wake. Hello there. You picked a good time to visit our town. Deerfest is just two weeks away. Deerfest, huh? Did you hear that, honey? You have a lovely wife. If you don't mind me saying. I'm Pat Main, by the way. Nice to meet you. I like yeah, that plane. I'm Alan Wake. I won't pretend I don't recognize a famous writer such as yourself, Mr. Wake. A pleasure. I'm an avid reader myself. I hope this isn't too presumptuous of me, but I'm the night host at the local radio station. Any chance I could get an interview? The water Look, seems really choppy. Mr. Maine, I'm on vacation. In fact, I'd it's appreciate it if we could keep my being here just between the two of us. I'm sure you understand. Fair enough. You can trust me to be discreet. Not a hard man to track down if you change your mind, though. I hope you two have a lovely holiday. I hope so too. I don't want any weird Very things nice. to happen. I got a couple of really good ones. And I see you made a friend. That's cute. Right. Yeah? Hey, bestseller. How's my favorite writer? Are you there yet? Very. Yeah. We just got here. Are the locals giving you trouble? Just say the word and I'll hop on a plane and come make sure that you're left alone, Al. No, Barry, we're fine. Great, great. Just want to make sure you can relax and recharge. So, how is the place? Has it gotten your creative juices flowing? Barry, we're just settling in. Okay, Al. I'll call back later to make sure you're doing okay. And you call me if there's a problem, okay? Okay. I'm just looking out for you, buddy. Talk to you later. I love you too, Barry. You know he's going to be calling you every five minutes. Barry is Barry. I can always turn off the phone. What did I tell you? Text message from Barry. He says hi to you too. Barry is one of my favorite characters Alan, in the game. Alan, we're here. Come on, let's get back to the car. Which one's our car again? This one? We need to stop at the local diner to get the cabin key from the landlord. A Mr. Carl Stuckey. He's waiting for us. I don't remember the voice acting I'll being so stiff. Get the key. I'll pick you up here in, say, 15 minutes? Sure. Alan, thank you for coming here with me. I love you too. Go on. I'll promise to behave. Alice returns in 15 minutes to see the no diner in flames. Like this. Towns where everybody knew everybody. Welcome to the Oh Dear Diner. Hi, I was wondering if you could help me. I'm looking for... Mr. Wake. Alan, wake. Oh, God! I am your biggest fan. I know people say that all the time, but I really am. I'm glad to hear that. Rose. Rose, I'm looking for Mr. Stuckey. Carl Stuckey? Carl? Of course, Mr. Wake. He must have gone to visit the restroom. He'll be back in a moment. I can't believe it. I've got all of your books. I got the cutout from the bookstore when they took it out of the window. <laughs> and you keep it here. Well, okay. Good for you. <laughs> Not creepy at all, lady. Try the Do coffee. Do me a favor, Sonny. I could really use a tune right now. Coconut, number six in the jukebox. I'd do it myself, but both of my legs have gone to sleep. Bad circulation. Yeah. Are you serious? Coconut again? You disgust me. Call yourself a rocker. Unbelievable. <laughs> it does that. Get stuck. Yeah. You need to give it a good solid whack. Now that's what I'm talking about. Yes. This is it. I've died and gone to hell. The lime and the coconut and put them both together. <laughs> this guy right here, the one with the bandana that isn't very happy about the song playing, sounds like John DiMaggio to me. 
I don't know if it is though or not. <laughs> don't go in there, young man. You can hurt yourself in the dark. I think I can handle it, ma'am. I didn't want to wait. I wanted to find Stucky to, to get the key and get out as soon as possible. The waitress was giving me a headache. Overeager fans listen. always did. Yeah, it's not that creepy back here or that dark old lady. Hello? Mr. Stucky? Carl couldn't make it. Unfortunately, he was taken ill. But I have the key for you and instructions on how to get to the lake. Okay. I wish you a good stay in my cabin. I'll come by later to check how you've settled in. And to meet your wife. I insist. Thanks. I don't like you, woman. Cauldron Lake is a special place. Very inspiring. So, and this is what I was... Lucky this time, young man. You can hurt yourself in the dark. What I was... Really ought to be fixed. And then I Stop must interrupting me. Sarah to change the lights at the station. It's been too long already. So this is what I was saying that, uh... It's kind of like Twin Peaks in the first video. Because it's kind of like duality with light and dark. There's the crazy light lady instead of the crazy log lady. A diner with a, a hot woman working at it. And just some very quirky characters. That sounds better than your singing. Are you alright? <laughs> the Andersons, they're uh, local musicians. We're waiting for Dr. Hartman to come pick them up. They wandered off from his clinic at the Cauldron Lake Lodge. Oh, well, thanks for telling me when I didn't ask you. Bye, Mr. Wake. Mission accomplished. The key and the directions. My hero. I got some flashlights, just in case. Hey, wait! Mrs. Wake! Your... Your keys! Bum, bum, bum. That diner was a real nut house. <laughs> Can you believe this place? This would make a wonderful setting for a book. We're supposed to be on vacation, Alice. I'll figure it out when we get back home. Okay? Okay. We can talk about this later. Batman here on PBF FM. I didn't want to talk about it. I wanted to bury my head in sand. Here's another one of my favorites to go with it. Once upon a time, I was a successful writer. But that was a long time ago. I hadn't been able to write a word in two years. Not since my last book. It's a long time to not be able to write, mate. And now the weather. It's going to be a clear night, so you folks in the big city might want to look up every once in a while and see those stars winking down at you. Nah, it gets pretty dark out here, but they'll light your way. It's gorgeous, Alan. It's it something, is. all right. Don't worry, honey. I'll get you inside safe and sound before it gets dark. And I've got the flashlight. I know. I'm okay. Alice had a phobia. The fear of darkness. I wanted to make sure we were inside with the lights on before sunset. Kind of old to be afraid of the dark, aren't you, Alice? And hurry up with that luggage. The island had once been the site for a love story. Maybe it would be that again. Where's the door? Why am I running into the wall like an idiot? 
an old generator had been connected to the power cable. Generator mechanics pretty straightforward. Hit A when it's in the green circle, the green area of the circle. The lights are on. Good work, honey. I'll freshen up a bit and start settling in. Okay. I'll look around a bit. Sure thing. Have fun. It was a beautiful place. I told myself I could rest here, sleep here, and forget about my work. Sounds like you've been forgetting about your work for two years already. I thought we could be happy here. But I thought wrong. Just then, a giant dildo demon came in and raped me and Alice in the ear. At the same time, from my head to hers, it was horrible. Alice? Honey? Alan, I'm upstairs. I have a surprise for you. Well, Ooh, sexy there. surprise. I'm not the surprise. It's in the study. Go take a look. <laughs> okay. I'm in my underwear and a tank top for no reason. Surprise! Alice? What is this? I guess I have a small confession to make. I thought maybe you could write here that a change of scenery would get you past- Damn, Alice, you- Everyone Hey, keeps... hey, hey! Just hear me out! There's a local doctor, Dr. Hartman. I read a book of his. He has a private clinic here. He specializes in helping artists. Your mouth is so moving at the same speed as your voice. No! It's not like that! That's not- Alan? Crazy dark lady. Alan! I don't! Just don't! I don't want to hear it! God damn it, Alice! God damn it! I knew she wouldn't follow me in the dark. I needed some time alone to think things through. <sighs> Damn it. <sighs> Alice? gone dark. All the lights were out. Alan? I'm coming, Alan? baby! Where are you? Help! Alice, I'm coming! It's alright, I'm coming! No! What the hell? Alan! I need you, because I'm not about to make my own sandwiches. I don't know how much mayo to put or how to put the cheese Alice. on. Seems like a good idea, considering you don't even know how shallow or deep that water is. Keep going, Alice. <gasps> Wake up. Alice? <sighs> Waking up in the crashed car felt like I had woken from one nightmare and entered another. I couldn't remember how I got there. All I knew was that something terrible had happened to Alice. The phone was dead. I'd have to find help on foot. Among Alice's things was a book, The Creator's Dilemma, by a Dr. Emil Hartman. Seeing the book brought back my fight with Alice. I didn't like it, and I didn't like the guy's smug face on the cover either. Okay, everyone, this is where things start to take a turn for the interesting. And I'm going to go ahead and end this video here. If you want to continue seeing the adventures of Alan Wake, stay tuned for episode three. Alan Wake, the dark forest of death. See you soon.